Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar. We'll get started in just a few moments. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our What to Expect presentation. My name is Jenna Wiley, Examinations Administrator at CFP Board, and I'm delighted to be your host for today's session. Also presenting today is Amanda Zapata, Marketing Acquisitions Manager. Whether you're considering taking the CFP exam or you've already embarked on your journey towards certification, you're in the right place. During this presentation, we will cover what awaits you on exam day. We'll talk through your exam day experience before, during, and after testing. Before we dive into the details, let's take a look at what's on the agenda for today's webinar. First, we'll provide you with an overview of the CFP exam. Next, we'll delve into the details of your exam appointment so you know exactly what you'll be facing on exam day. Following that, we'll share some valuable tips and strategies to help you prepare effectively for the CFP exam. We understand that preparing for such a rigorous examination can be challenging, and we're here to provide you with the tools you need to succeed. Then we'll provide you with information on additional resources, including study materials, practice exams, and support networks that can be immensely valuable during your CFP exam journey. In the latter part of our webinar, we'll address frequently asked questions about the CFP exam. We encourage you to participate in the Q&A session where you can ask any questions you may have and we'll do our best to provide you with clear and insightful answers. Let's get started. The CFP exam is available in an eight day window. The November 2023 exam will be administered between October 31st and November 7th, 2023. We are currently in the standard exam registration window, which ends October 10th for the exam registration price of 925. The education verification deadline is also October 10th. The CFP certification examination assesses your ability to integrate and apply a broad base of financial planning knowledge in the context of real life financial planning situations. The exam content requires the use of critical thinking and problem solving ability with less emphasis on factual recall or recognition. Exam que questions are written by volunteer subject matter experts based on the outcome of a practice analysis of personal financial planning. The analysis defines the principal knowledge domains that serve as a blueprint for developing the content of the exam. Each of the 170 exam questions that you will answer are linked to at least one of the principal knowledge domains. The approximate percentage of content coverage on the exam is indicated following the general headings. The CFP exam is a computer-based exam consisting of 170 multiple choice questions administered during the course of two three-hour sessions. Your appointment duration is seven hours with six hours of testing time. You will be able to move through the exam at your own pace within each three-hour test section. Three hours are provided for the first 85 questions and another three hours are provided for the last 85 questions. Each section is subdivided into two subsections. Candidates may take an optional unscheduled break after question 43 of the first subsection. You will also be able to take a 40 minute break in between sections as well as any unscheduled breaks as needed. You will answer three different question types standalone questions, short scenarios, and case studies. Standalone questions are typically two to three sentences long with four answer options to select from. Scenario-based questions are associated with multiple exam questions, typically three questions per scenario. You will see the scenario on the left side of the screen with one question at a time shown on the right side of the screen. Case studies are like scenario-based questions, but longer, with the case study scenario covering several pages and typically eight to 12 questions per case study. Several days before your exam appointment, be sure to review the directions to your test center and practice the route you will take to the location. Be sure to arrive 30 minutes before your scheduled appointment. 
This will provide ample time for the check-in procedures. Also review and become familiar with Prometric emergency and rescheduling policies. You can find this information on the inside cover of your exam candidate handbook. Make sure you know what to expect if your appointment is canceled. On a related note, do not schedule any trips or vacations immediately after your scheduled appointment. If your appointment is canceled, you will need to be available during a limited window for rescheduling. Now Jenna will discuss what to expect on exam day. Thank you, Amanda. Let's start with what to bring to the exam. You'll need to bring a government issued ID and one or more financial calculators. Your ID must be one of the approved types of identification, which include a valid driver's license, a valid government issued ID card, a valid passport, or a US military ID card. The photo ID must also contain your signature. We encourage you to review your ID ahead of time to confirm that it has not expired. Be sure the name on your ID directly matches the name you use to register for your exam. Your first and last name should match what is listed within your CFP board account. Remember to check your ID prior to exam day. If there is an inconsistency with the name on your identification and the name you registered for the CFP exam with, please contact CFP board immediately. Also bring one or more battery powered, non-programmable, dedicated financial function calculators. While testing is in session, you are prohibited from accessing electronic devices other than an acceptable calculator. You will be able to store other electronic devices in your locker, but you will not be able to access them while testing is in session. Any food, drink, and review notes that you bring to the test center will not be allowed in the exam room. You may store them in your locker and can only access them during your scheduled 40-minute break. Calculators containing visible formulas must be covered. You will not be allowed to bring the calculator into the testing room if formulas are visible on the reverse side of the calculator. You may cover up formulas with black electrical tape or by taping blank paper over the formulas. A link to the calculator policy is listed in the reference section at the end of this webinar. During the check-in procedure, the test center administrators will review your ID, visually check glasses if you wear them, ask you to sign in, assign you a locker, capture your photo, do a brief body scan, review your calculator, and show you to your seat. For the body scan, you will be asked to show arms and ankles, as well as empty your pockets from the agreed safe distance area. You will have access to your locker during the scheduled break. You will not have access to your locker while you are testing. Promatric will provide you with scratch paper and pencils. The test center administrator will review your calculator and ask you to clear any stored memory. Please review the CFP board calculator policy for a list of approved calculators. Also be sure to review the functions for clearing your calculator memory and become proficient in restoring your preferred calculator settings. For example, know how to set begin and end functions for time value of money calculations. No other materials are allowed at your workstation during the exam. The tax tables and formulas will be made available to you as an on-screen resource while taking the exam. Printed copies will not be allowed in the testing room. Other prohibited invited Items include food, notes of any kind, electronic devices except for the approved calculator, and personal headphones. As of May 1st, 2023, Prometric now permits water in a clear container with a lid or cap in the testing room. After you check in, the test center administrator will show you to your assigned workstation. Noise canceling headphones will be available upon request from the test center administrator. Any notes that you take will be collected and are not permitted to leave the exam room. Security of the exam is vital and protected by active proctoring and monitoring of video camera surveillance. The digital vid video recordings are retained until after exam results are official. Before the exam, you will be asked to accept the CFP certification exam pledge agreement, making a commitment to behave ethically before, during, and after the exam. Please familiarize yourself with the agreement provided to exam candidates before the start of the exam session. Failure to accept the agreement will disqualify the candidate from taking the exam, forfeiting the exam fee. 
During the exam, candidates are permitted to take unscheduled break to use the restroom or get a drink of water. Please be aware that during unscheduled break, no additional time is provided. You will also be subject to another check-in process upon your return. To request a break, raise your hand so that the test center administrator comes to your workstation to properly check you out of the exam. Halfway through your appointment, there is a scheduled 40-minute break. The exam will begin automatically after the 40-minute break time expires. Please be sure to return to your seat before time expires. At the end of each section, you will encounter the end of section screen. The end of section screen provides an opportunity for you to take an unscheduled break between sections. Remember, the timer will not stop during unscheduled breaks. If you do not need a break, you can click the next button to continue to the next section. You will encounter two confirmation messages when you end each section. If you have not answered all of the questions in the section, the message will inform you of this. Once you finish this section, you will not be able to return to this part of the exam to review questions. Be sure to review questions marked for review before proceeding to the next section. If additional time remains after all exam questions have been answered, you may review your work from section 2B only. You may submit your exam for scoring before your final three hours have expired. After submitting your exam for scoring, you will be asked, are you sure you want to submit your exam for scoring? Once you click yes, your exam session has ended and you cannot return to view your exam. You will then answer a short survey and then your preliminary results will be displayed. You will also receive an email from Prometric with a copy of your preliminary results. When you are done, you will exit the testing room and report to the test center administrator. At that point, you can retrieve your person, sorry, you can retrieve your personal belongings and from your locker and return your locker key. A timer is available in the top center of your exam screen. The timer shows both the remaining time in the section and the total time remaining on the exam. Note how you can toggle between the options by clicking on the timer. Having the correct amount of time showing on your screen will allow you to properly pace yourself and ensure you answer all the questions in the specific section you are in. If you select the option for total time remaining, please note that this includes the five minutes allocated for the survey at the end. Section two will end when there are five minutes remaining. The CFP certification exam is a pass or fail exam. Each test question counts for one point each. Passing is based on the candidate's total score across all sections of the exam. Preliminary results are provided to you immediately after taking the exam. Official results are provided to candidates by email approximately four weeks following the close of the testing window. Candidates who pass the exam will receive a congratulatory email with instructions for completing the certification process. If you do not pass, you'll receive a diagnostic report of your exam across the principal knowledge domains with indications of your relative strengths and weaknesses so that you know where to focus your studies for the next time you take the exam. CFP Board does not disclose official exam results over the phone, by text, or by fax. The software used to deliver the exam includes key features such as the ability to mark questions for review, highlight and strike out text, and view the exam tax tables and formula sheet. Become familiar with the exam software features by taking the CFP Board practice exam. Now Amanda will discuss how to prepare for the exam. Thanks, Jenna. Now I'll talk about the CFP Board practice exam. CFP Board has two 170 question practice exams that you can use to help you prepare for the CFP exam that include psychology of financial planning questions. The practice exams mirror the format and content coverage of the CFP exam, providing the closest replica of what you can expect on exam day. Upon completion, you'll receive a diagnostic result report showing your performance in each principal knowledge domain, which you can use to address knowledge gaps as you continue studying. The first practice exam is complimentary with your exam registration and can be accessed in your online account. 
CFP Board has also put together a couple of additional resources for you to help as you prepare for the exam and are available for download on our website. The Candidate Handbook is a quick reference tool for exam-related questions in one convenient location. It addresses topics covered in this webinar and provides additional information on registration, scheduling, exam preparation, and what to expect on exam day. The Preparation Toolkit helps candidates gain an understanding of the steps to effectively study in preparation for the CFP exam. And this page also contains the guidance and regulatory change documents. Don't forget about the Mentor Program, which is designed to help as you prepare for the exam by connecting you with the CFP professional. Mentors can help you focus on time management, study strategy, staying motivated, dealing with work-life balance, and more. For more information, you can visit cfp.net slash mentor. If you have any additional questions about preparing for the CFP exam, please reach out to our team of candidate advocates at Get Certified 2023 at cfpboard.org. We also have our online candidate forum where you can connect with other candidates and obtain useful tips and guidance in preparation for the exam. We definitely encourage you to join online conversations or read through posts and testimonials on how others prepared for the exam. You may even find groups of people to virtually study with. All you need is your CFP port account to access this online forum. Log in at candidateforum.cfp.net. Please feel free to review these documents mentioned throughout the webinar. These are important resources for exam candidates. The webinar will be available on our website within a week and we'll make sure to email everyone attending today a copy of the webinar as well, so you can also access these references at that point. Now we will pause for a few minutes to review and answer any pending questions that were submitted during the webinar. All right, Jenna, we have a few questions here. Um, are all of the questions on the exam multiple choice? Thanks, Amanda. That's a great question. Yes, they're all multiple choice and they are all they all have four answer choices with only one correct. Perfect. Um, we actually have a couple of questions here on dress code for the exam. Is there any sort of dress code for the testing center? So the only thing you need to know about the dress code, you can definitely dress comfortably, but they you might be asked to remove any jewelry or outerwear and have that placed in your locker. The only jewelry that the Prometric test centers typically allow is a wedding ring. Perfect. Um, water, can we bring water into the testing room? Yes, so this is a new um, this is a new policy from Prometric. So you can now bring a clear container, so like a water bottle with the label removed that has a lid on it. You can have that with you at your um, at your desk at, in the testing room. Awesome. A couple of questions here about break time. Can you go over more about an, uh, what an unscheduled break is versus what the scheduled break is, and during the scheduled break, what you can do? Can you act? You know. When you can access your locker, can you leave the testing center? Can you go over that a little bit more? Yes, absolutely. So a scheduled break is built into the exam at the midway point. So after the first three hours of the exam, there will be 40 minutes of break time that a lot of candidates will use to eat lunch, um, recharge, and yes, you can leave the test center during this time. And you can also access your locker and anything in there. So the difference between an unscheduled and a scheduled break is during an unscheduled break. So this is any other break other than that midpoint 40 minutes, that would be the only scheduled break. So any other time during the exam that you take a break, we consider an unscheduled break where 
You can leave the testing room to use the bathroom, for example, but you cannot access anything in your locker and you'll be subject to check in procedures after both the unscheduled and scheduled breaks when you return to the testing room. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jen. I think that's very helpful. Um, uh, and, and just one follow up question on kind of the the not necessarily break times, but the um, structure of the exam. When you finish a subsection, can you go back to it or can you only move forward? You can only move forward. So whenever you see a an end of section screen, so um, for the first uh, for the first section subsection, they, you'll see a screen that says this is the end of subsection one a. You can take an unscheduled break now if you'd like. And if you wouldn't like to take a break, you can proceed now. So anytime you see a screen like that or after the 40 minute break in the middle, you cannot go back to the sub subsection. So you'll want to make sure you're complete and finished with every single question in that you'd like to answer within the subsections before you move forward. Great, thank you for confirming that. Let's talk about scratch paper. Will there be scratch paper or a whiteboard provided at the testing center? And same goes for pencils or pens. You know, what is provided in terms of you know, note taking for during the exam? Definitely. So you will receive a booklet of four sheets of scratch paper. So the test center administrator will give you that right at the beginning of your test, and they'll also provide you with pencils. So you don't need to bring any of that yourself. They'll provide you with those four sheets of scratch paper. And if you fill up your scratch paper booklet, you'll just need to turn that completed booklet into your test, set, test center administrator. So just raise your hand and they'll come swap it out for you. They'll take your used one and they'll give you a blank brand new sheet, a uh, brand new booklet of scratch paper. Awesome, thank you. We have a couple of questions about testing remotely. Um, is there a separate, you know, anything that we wanted to go over regarding testing remotely or for those that are testing remotely, will they get a set of instructions of, of what to expect? Great question. So for remote testers, there's a few, there's a few resources that I would recommend. One being the, um, our candidate handbook that we provide to all of our testers. I would recommend checking out the remote testing section within our candidate handbook. And we also have a Q and A page online. In addition to that, Prometric actually has a, um, a what to expect video all about remote testing. And they'll show you exactly what you wanna see there. You can find that just by visiting prometric.com and viewing resources for test takers. But if you need help finding that link, feel free to email, email us at examinations at cfpboard.org. And we're happy to answer any other questions about remote testing for you. Awesome, thank you, Jenna. Um, tax tables and formulas, how are those provided? So those are on screen. You will not receive them as um, as physical sheets of paper. So those you'll be able to click um, buttons on your exam. So there will be a tax table button and a formula sheet button. Those will open up as pop ups on your exam, and then you can have them lock into um, the left side of your screen while you still have the test questions on the right side of your screen. So you'll be able to scroll through the tax table at the same time you're viewing the exam question. So you'll be able to have both of those open at the same time. I would also recommend um, checking out the practice exam to see how this functionality works because it's the same as on the practice exam. Perfect, I was just gonna suggest that. The CFP board practice exam is set up that, you know, on exactly kind of what you can expect on the exam day software. So I, like Jenna said, I, I cannot reiterate that enough. Definitely recommend taking the CFP board practice exam to get more of a, a test drive feel of, of your exam day experience. Um, Jenna, regarding preliminary results, will you, will you or will the test taker receive preliminary results on screen in the exam center um, and via email or how exactly can they expect to receive that pass or fail result? Great question. So it's actually both. Right after you finish the survey, um, once you complete the survey on your exam, it will come up and let you know you have passed or you have failed. Um, it'll just say that on the screen, very brief. And then 
you'll also re immediately receive an email with more information. So the um, email, if you pass, will just let you know that you passed and give you some you pass preliminarily and um, give you some more detail there. And then if you don't pass the exam, you'll receive a breakdown on um, how you performed on each of the principal knowledge domains. Awesome. Thank you for confirming that. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding um, break time, a couple of other follow-up questions uh, regarding structure of the exam um, and break time. So break the first question related to that, do you have to take the whole 40 minutes? No, you don't. So if you just want to take a few minutes of the break, it'll start automatically and then you can leave the room, um, take your break for as long or short as you want, or you can skip the break altogether if that's what you choose. You'll just come back and there will be a button you can click to resume testing from there. So you do not need to take the full 40 minutes. Perfect. And be very careful when you do click resume testing, because once you click that, you're locked in to resuming your testing. Is that correct? Exactly. Test okay, yes. Perfect. Um, can you define subsection again? How many subsections are there? Sure. So there's four subsections of the exam. So you'll see um, the first half of the exam for those four, first three hours, there will be subsection 1A, then a um, unscheduled break between that and subsection 1B. So both of those have a shared three hour timer. Then there's a 40 minute break. And then there's two more subsections for the rest of the last three hours of the exam. So you'll see subsection 2A and 2B. And your timer, if between 1A and 1B and 2A and 2B, if you do take an unscheduled break, your timer continues to run. Like that three hours for, for both sections, um, the three hours does not stop. Exactly, that's correct. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, next question here is related to the practice exam. Can the practice exam be taken over a two day period, breaking it up into two parts? Or, you know, can you talk more about the um, using the practice exam and the timing of that? Absolutely. So you would not be able to take it over two days. So once you begin your practice exam, you it's modeled exactly like the regular exam. So you will have um, six hours to take the practice exam with um, through the actual testing time with a break in the middle. And you once you click begin on the practice exam, you'll have to complete it within 24 hours. So if you stop and exit out of your browser and take a break, it'll pause that way, but you have to make sure that you come back and complete everything within a 24 hour time frame. Perfect. Thank you. And and like uh, like Jenna was saying, you can at, you can view you know your access period if you've started and stopped your 24 hour timer all in your online account. Um, so mm -hmm. if you have any questions on that, reach out to us and we can help you know make sure that everything is is good to go for you. But definitely make sure you're keeping track of that 24 hour timer once you launch your practice exam. Um, okay. Next question here. Uh, let we have some questions about arriving to the test center. How early should someone arrive to their testing appointment? Great question. So we recommend at least 30 minutes because you'll need to go through those check-in procedures that we explained before. They'll have to um, get you all set up with a locker and everything. So I would recommend at least 30 minutes prior to the time that you scheduled for. Awesome. Thank you. Are you allowed to stand up to stretch without leaving the room or are you expected to remain seated during your testing appointment? That's a great question. So you are expected to remain seated. It would be up to the test center administrator in that room if they um, if they wanted to, you know, not allow you to stretch there. I would recommend that if you need a break to stand up and walk around or anything that you actually leave the testing room so as not to disturb any other testers. Perfect. Can uh, what happens if you finish early in the first half or or in the second half? But what happens if you finish early? Can you keep moving on? Can you take your 40 minute break before the three hours is done? Or, you know, are you locked into three hours? Great question. So yes, you can finish early. So you'll just have to um, be aware that any of the remaining three hours in that section, you won't be able to use it on a different section. So for example, if you finish 
the first half of your exam, so those first three hours, if maybe you finish it in two and a half hours, you can finish that section and submit it and proceed to your break at that time. But that additional 30 minutes will not be applied to the second half of the exam. Um, similarly, similarly, yes, you can um, you can finish the second half of your exam early if you'd like as well. You do not need to stay for the entire six hours testing time if you don't need it. Great. Can you flag a question for review prior to completing and exiting from a subsection? So yes, you can flag questions for review, but you'll need to go back to review them while you are in the subsection. So if you flag a question for review, but then submit that subsection, you won't be able to go back to review that question. So you'll be able to see on your exam screen if you have any questions flagged for review, and you'll be able to revisit those while you are in that subsection. Great. Some follow-up questions on scrap paper or the scratch paper that's provided. If when you the first one is when you exchange an old scrap paper book for a new one, can you keep any of the old pages that you've used, or do you have to do a complete swap of that? You have to do a complete swap. And do you after your scheduled break, do you get the same booklet back that you were using if you haven't used up those four pages? Or is that left at your testing? Um, center if you leave for your scheduled break or your testing um, desk? That's a great question. Um, and I'm actually, I'll admit I'm not positive. Um, I would think that they have you turn it in, but if you want to go ahead and follow up um, with that question at our email address, I can check on that for you. So if you want to go ahead and send that in an email to examinations at cfpboard.org, we can check on that and give you a solid answer there. Perfect. Um, if you, this is, this is a question on retaking the exam. If for some reason you're not successful on your first attempt or, or attempt of the exam, when can you retest and what is the cost? Mm -hmm. Great question. So you can retest the very next exam window. So for example, if you're testing this upcoming November and you do not pass, you can test again in March. Um, so long as you have not already tested three times within one year period. So that's the maximum, excuse me, a two year period. So that's the maximum number of times you can test within a two year period. Um, the cost to retest is the same cost as you um, originally paid. Each exam attempt is the same price. Great. Thank you. Um, a couple of questions about computer monitors. How many compute? Do you know how many computer screens there are at the testing desk? So at your specific testing station, there will only be one monitor, and it's it's like a desktop setup. Perfect. Thank you. Um, question here on what to do if a calculator dies mid-exam. Can you, like, if you can't access extra batteries in your locker, do you recommend bringing ac extra batteries into the testing room with you? What, you know, kind of, how would you, how would you recommend making sure you don't run into a calculator issue? Good question. So you can bring in multiple calculators if you have them, if you wanted to bring in two financial calculators or one financial calculator and a basic function calculator, you could do both of those things. And you can also bring in loose batteries in, um, in a clear sort of like a Ziploc bag. You can bring those into the exam room as well. Perfect. Um, can we act, can we access the formulas page ahead of time while we're studying to know what will be included? Yes, absolutely. So you can access the tax tables and formulas on our website. They're under the exam prep resources page, or you should be able to just search that on our website. If you have any problems finding that, feel free to send us an email. Perfect. Thank you, Jenna. How long does it take to be rechecked into the exam? So say someone's taking an unscheduled break to use the restroom or, um, you know, just get up, stretch, how, and or even you're coming back from your 40-minute break because we know that after the 40-minute scheduled break, um, the clock will start running again for the second section. Do you know about how long it takes to get checked in again? 
Great question. So it'll depend how many other people in your test center are um, checking back in at the same time. So if there's a lot of people who are all kind of coming back in at the same time, you may have to wait because there's only, um, you know, there's a limited number of staff at the test centers. But when you are actually being checked in, it only takes a few minutes, like five minutes or less. Okay, perfect. That's great to know. I'm sure that helps helps with timing and and definitely you know one thing to consider is when you're taking your practice exam um you know if you're doing this closer to exam day or at some point using it more as like a, a mock exam putting yourself in in your in the shoes of trying to take it you know on, on exam day um you know try taking an unscheduled break and then take five minutes an additional five minutes to prepare you know as if you're getting checked back in but you you know as you're taking our practice exam you can kind of put yourself in those scenarios to help you uh prepare you know yourself to for what to expect great point um when you when you do want to take an unscheduled break or you're at your 40 minute scheduled break do you raise your hand for the test center administrator to check you out um yes okay yes that's exactly what you should do perfect um how many times can you take the practice exam jenna so we provide one practice exam at no cost on your account so if you only have one practice exam on your account you can only take each one on your account one time and you will not be able to re-enter it after you submitted it but if you'd like, you can purchase additional practice exams. We also have a second version of the practice exam available for purchase on your CFP board account. Um, so if you purchase more, you can take as many as you have, but you cannot take the ones you've already taken more than once. Great, thank you. We have a couple of questions on the mix of topics covered on the exam. Is it a mix of all topic areas across all subsections of the exam, or are certain subsections dedicated to certain topic areas? Good question. They're all mixed up within the exam. Perfect. Thank you. Are you is someone required to reset calculators before the exam, and how does the test center administrator verify that? So they'll ask you to reset your calculator during the check-in procedure. So they'll have you do that as you're um, checking in and going through all of those procedures. And then if you'd like to return it to whatever settings you prefer, that's something you'll have to do on your own. Perfect. Thank you. We have a couple of questions here on multiple answers. Um, so we know it's a multiple choice exam, but are there questions that have um, multiple answers. So for example, question one is, you know, Roman numeral one, question two, or I mean, answer two could be one and two, uh, question three could be one, two and three, you know, or is it straight, you know, one out of the four answers presented? Great question. We do not have um, that type of exam question that you were describing with the Roman numerals on our exam. It's just completely straight. One answer is correct, and there will never be more than one answer correct. Perfect. With only one screen at the testing um, uh, uh, desk, I, I, the, the word uh, failed me for a second there, at, at, your, um, at your testing cube. Um, does that mean you'll have to toggle between the test and the supporting exam documents? Or when you open a supporting exam document like or tax tables and formulas, does that show up, you know, bump everything else to the right? You know, kind of how does that appear on the screen? Good question. So it will pop up um, initially as a smaller pop up. And then there's a button in the top right corner that looks like a push pin or a thumbtack. And when you click that thumbtack button, it will lock into the side of the screen. So for example, your case study document, you can pull it up, um, pull it up as a pop up and then thumbtack it onto the side of your screen. So you can scroll through the case study um, content at the same time as you can see the exam questions. So you can have it split screen, one on the left, one on the right. Perfect. Thank you. A couple of practice exam questions here. When you complete the practice exam, can you review the solutions after you submit your practice exam? Or can you only review the rationales as you're going through the practice exam? 
Great question. So you have to review the solutions and rationales while you're still within the practice exam. So on each question of the practice exam, you'll see the um, question and the answer choices, and then you'll also see a few buttons, including the tax tables, and there's also a button that says solution. So there's a button on every single question of the practice exam that says solution, and when you click it, you'll be able to see the solution and an explanation of why that answer is correct. Once you submit each section of the practice exam, you will no longer be able to view those solutions. So it's similar to the real the live exam where you can't go back to other subsections. You'll have to review all of the solutions and rationales while you're in each subsection. And once you've submit the practice exam, they will not be accessible. Perfect. Thank you. And if someone were to purchase or want to purchase our second practice exam, how would they do that? Good question. So you can go onto your CFP board account and there's a button that says my store. And I believe it's right at the top. It shows a, a link to purchase practice exams. Keep in mind that any copy of um, the practice exam titled practice exam one will all be the same. And any titled practice exam two will all be the same. So we'll, we'll all be the same as the practice exam two. So we only have two different options for the practice exam one and two. Great, thank you. That's very helpful. And do you, um... No, is the practice exam also timed or have the option for a timer? Yes, so it's timed just like the live exam. Perfect. Um, we have a couple other questions here. Um, can the fonts on the screen be increased to aid in reading on your um, testing software? So on the practice exam, it actually does allow you to do that. If you're looking for um, a way to increase the size of the exam content, I would recommend reaching out to our email and asking about testing accommodations as that's something that we would be able to provide. Um, there's a, there's software that's that can make the exam size larger for you. Perfect, thank you. Um, regarding the exam and timing, can you explain the total time again um, the and just, we have some questions about the exam ending with five minutes remaining um, and just some confusion around that. Got it. Let me actually pull this slide up again for reference. So the best one is right here. So the timing begins. So the, your full exam time is six hours total of testing time with that 40 minute break in between. So the first two sections of the exam, section 1A and 1B, have a shared three hour timer. So you'll need, you have three hours to complete both section 1A and 1B. Um, similarly, you have three hours to complete both section 2A and 2B. The five minutes at the end of the survey, or at the end for the survey, excuse me, um, that is something that you can either view in your test timer or not view. So let me show you another slide here. So there's a toggle at the top of your exam screen that looks just like this with that you're seeing on the screen now. If you click this toggle between section time remaining and total time remaining, total exam time remaining, um, you can't see it on this um, on this graphic here, but it will include the five extra minutes that are included in the exam for the survey. So the survey time doesn't take any time out of the three hours you have, which you'll see in the section time remaining timer, but it will just show in the test in the total time remaining timer. It will not take out of the three hours. Perfect. Thank you, Jenna. I think that's helpful. Mm -hmm. We hope that helps clarify for you. Um, we have a question here on you know test preparation resources and review courses. Um, and I would just recommend, you know, we don't have any recommendations on review course companies to use. We, we have a non-comprehensive list that we can point you in the direction of, of our website. But I would also recommend just jumping on to our online community, the candidate forum. There is a lot of robust discussion around review course providers and just generally how your peers review uh, prepared for the exam. So I'd, I'd highly recommend um, jumping on the candidate forum. Jen, I don't know if you have anything else to add on, on other places to look for exam prep resources. 
Yeah, so those are definitely the exact recommendations I would give as well. If you're looking for that list of review, co review course providers Amanda mentioned, you can just search on our website, um, review courses, or it's in our um, exam preparation resources. And like Amanda said, we have a non-comprehensive list of those there for you to look through. Perfect. Question on the highlighter or strikeout tool. So mm -hmm. if someone highlights part of a of an answer or strikes out an answer and then marks that for review or comes back to it later before submitting their subsection um, for completion. Will those still be on the question, like on the question answers, mm -hmm. the highlighter or strikeout tool if you go back to it? Yes, it will, as long as you haven't submitted the subsection. Perfect. Um, are you allowed to wear a sweater into the testing room or is that something that you said that you're likely going to be required to take it off? Yes, and, and you can have a, locker? yeah, good question. So you could have a, um, like a light jacket with you. They just won't allow you to have any outerwear, like a big winter coat. Okay, perfect. And can you take it off while you're testing and put it on the back of your chair? Or is it something where the test center administrator will want you to like how you come into the testing room is how you should stay? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question too. You can take it off and have it at the back of your chair. The test, the test center administrator at your specific test center might have other instructions for you. Okay, perfect. So work closely with the test center administrators at the center that you're at. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, I think we're almost at time here. I'm trying to see if there are any um, other questions. On the practice exam, what steps do you need to take to complete the practice exam? Can you just go over again how to access that? Yeah, absolutely. So the practice exam um, is on your CFP board account. So if you access your CFP board account, you log in there, there's an, an exam tab on there. So once you click the exam tab, you'll be able to just scroll down and find the section that says access your practice exam. Once you're on there, you'll be able to see the list of any practice exams you have on your account, along with if you've already taken them, their expiration date, information like that. Um, one important thing to remember to remember is there's a button next to any practice exams that you haven't yet taken that says get practice test. Once you click that button, your practice exam will start. So make sure you do not click that button until you are ready to actually take your practice exam. Uh, but once you're ready there on your CFP board account, you'll be able to just click that get practice test button, uh, settle in for the next few hours and take it from there. Perfect. Actually, we have a couple, of, I, I think we have a few minutes. So I, we have a couple of questions that I want to get through um, quickly mm -hmm. that I have come in that I think are, are really good here for the group. Um, are there always four answer choices, sometimes five? Can it switch or is there a standard that we have? It's always four. Perfect. Um, and then if you do not answer a question, say you leave it unanswered accidentally or, or on purpose, can you still submit your subsection without a question answered? Or will it say, hey, you don't have these questions answered? So it will come up and tell you if you don't have all the questions answered, but you can still submit it without, um, you can submit it if you want to without having all of them answered. So it'll ask you to confirm, do you really want to move forward? Exactly. Perfect. Um, and do we, how many um, um, case studies are typically on the exam? Is that something that we can answer? Yep, just one. Perfect. Okay, here, I think we have um, one more question here about the practice exam that um, that a couple hey, Amanda, people have asked. Amanda, yep. I, have a, I have a clarification. It's actual, you can actually see one to two large case studies on each exam. It's um, the case studies can take up to 10 to 15 questions. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. So, so just to confirm with everybody, you could see one to two case studies um, on exam day. Um, and then regarding the, the practice the practice exam, we've had this asked a couple of times, so I just don't wanna leave it unanswered. Um, can, we, can you talk about how the questions, uh, like how we, 
found the questions for the CFP practice exam, right? And kind of, um, you know, what, how that can give people a good sense of what to expect on exam day. Sure, good question. So the practice exam questions, some of them could have been retired from existing or from previous exam forms. And then some of them are developed the exact same way that we develop our um, live exam questions. So they're all validated and created by uh, CFP professionals with experience and expertise. Um, so you can you can expect to have the same level um, of quality on the practice exam questions as on the live exam questions. Jenna, I'd like to follow up on this. This is a recurring question and people are asking if it's a, a lesser quality and that could be farther than the truth. Uh, what, what we have is there's a, a performance range. We have metrics on each exam question and there are limits to where we, we can select exam questions that must perform within specific parameters. Any questions that are poorly performing questions are archived and no longer used for public consumption. And the practice test, we actually have to use test questions that perform well and are within the selection criteria for the live, live exam. The only reason why they've been retired is so that we can offer a practice test, but they are not compromised questions or, or poor questions. They're, the, they're representative of actual questions that have been used on the exam. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Jenna. I think I think that's very helpful to understand that you know we have developed the practicing exam truly as a practice to give you a good frame of reference for exam day and what to expect. We wouldn't want you to go in feeling um, as if you know as if we've duped you by any means, right? We 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 want to help you prepare and be successful. So please, you know, take advantage of the practice exam. If you have any questions, please reach out to our exams team. Jenna and Eric are more than happy to answer any additional questions. And I don't know that we have too many other questions here. Um, let me see if one last last one came in here. Um, oh, one last question on the practice exam and then we'll wrap up. Um, but Jenna, um, on the second practice exam, is that also the same as the first practice exam where you only have 24 hours to complete it? Yes, it's the same setup. Perfect. Well, I appreciate everybody's time. Um, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to our examinations team, uh, Jenna and Eric, at examinations at cfpboard.org. Again, the whole organization is more than happy to assist you as you prepare for the CFP exam. I hope you all have a wonderful day.